When Robin Williams died on August 11th, 2014, it wouldn't be an exaggeration to say that people all around the world, those who had never even met him, mourned his loss. Some because of the nostalgia growing up with Aladdin, Jumanji, or Mrs. Doubtfire playing in the other room during snow days. Some because Patch Adams had hit home, had inspired them to go to volunteer in children's hospitals themselves. Many just because he made them laugh. A simple act which, in itself, makes the world a better place. But some, they mourned him because they met him, they knew him, and he changed their lives. Imagine losing your childhood best friend, your companion, your everything. And on top of that, you are confined, out of place, and being studied like an animal. Months go by after your companion dies, and you don't smile, you don't laugh, not even once. You are more alone than you've ever been. And then one day, Robin Williams walks in. He sits with you, he talks to you, and where other people are hesitant, a bit scared even, and maybe rightfully so, he is bubbly, excited, ecstatic. And within minutes, you're smiling again, you're laughing. You take his glasses off and try them on before going through his wallet that you've picked out of his pocket, and now he's laughing too. Someone records the entire encounter. I mean, how could they not? It's not every day you see Robin Williams palling around with someone who looked like her. When the call came in to Dr. Penny Peterson on the day Robin Williams died, she only realized her conversation had been overheard when the sadness set in. It said that upon hearing the conversation, Coco the gorilla understood what had happened. That she had lost the friend who helped her mourn the loss of another so many years before. At least, that's the story we've been told. Welcome back to Respect the Dead, the podcast where we don't. Sweaty, it's no surprise that everybody celebrated your demise. And now, worms are eating your eyes. So don't you worry your rotten head as you sleep in your sodden bed. It's time to respect the It's a motherfucking okay, so monkey. <laughs> the second you mentioned Robin Williams, I was like, oh, it's going to be about Coco. I, like, yes. Knew oh, my right God. Away. Okay. Because, like, <laughs> Damn it. That story is like, I love I love that story, but it's a lie. Coco was kind of a stupid bitch. Like, <laughs> like I'm okay. sorry. I'm like, I don't want to start off with Coco was a stupid bitch because people Coco. are going to fucking hate me. She was a monkey. <laughs> She was a little monkey with a little monkey's brain. And I think okay. let's all remember that going forward when people talk about her. I'm so mad that you knew it was fucking Coco because I went so far out of my way to not mention. To hide it. Uh, I knew it immediately. <laughs> to be a fucking gorilla. I love Robin Williams and, the, and Coco the gorilla. Like, Robin Williams, like, this is Coco. You know I would never touch Robin Williams with a 10-foot pole C immediately. for this. <laughs> yes. Like, <laughs> I knew Robin never Williams Robin is yours. Williams. No. Absolutely. <laughs> I do not. I do not have it in me to be like, now let's talk about this beloved random actor. <laughs> I don't care. We all know I don't yeah. care. <laughs> and I think he probably deserves more care than I would ever be able to provide, which is definitely you. Like when Robin Williams happens. Maybe I'll do him one day. It'll in be fact, you or no one. If you want a Robin Williams episode, let us know in the comments. Of our Patreon post for this episode. <laughs> oh, is this a Patreon I, special? <laughs> no, I just any little suggestion cemetery. Let's do. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. It's, I'm just trying to get their money. I just want their okay. delicious little money. Fair. We're starving. So I, oh I have God, to I'm drink so really hungry. small bottles of Diet Pepsi. Oh, I that's can't an afford extra a full diet. one. <laughs> it's it's Diet Diet Pepsi. <laughs> so. 
Coco, the gorilla, Mm -hmm. came into the world on July 4th, 1971 at the San Francisco Zoo, born to her biological parents, Jacqueline and Buana. Buana is like a gorgeous name. Yeah. I don't really care for a gorilla named Jacqueline. (laughs) (laughs) It just feels like really out of place. It's like like a very fancy name for a gorilla. (laughs) Yeah. It would be like. What is she, a fucking Kennedy? Yeah, like meeting like, I don't know, somebody's dog and like, what's its name? And they're like. Andrew. Herbert. Like, (laughs) like. Also, Jacqueline would be really weird. Let's just go with Jacqueline. <laughs> Jacqueline. It's like an animal named Jacqueline. <laughs> Coco was the 50th gorilla born in captivity, and she was among the earliest to be embraced by her mother in that setting. So her mother, not born in captivity, so was like, what the fuck is this? And most of the babies were just, she was like, I'm not dealing with this. We have bigger things to deal with. So I've been kidnapped. Right. <laughs> like, and That's I can't so stop depressing. having babies. <laughs> That's so sad. It really, really bothers me how it's never, I know to be like the annoying vegan or whatever, but like when people talk about any of these animals that they anthropomorphize, nobody ever mentions like, like, oh, they're just like people. And it's like, okay, well, if they're just like people, then why are we keeping them in cages, you freak? In cages. Like, yeah. <laughs> they like to have it both ways. It's like, oh my God, they're so smart and so wise. And it's like, well, it's kept in a cage. It's like, well, yeah, it's a fucking gorilla. <laughs> it would walk <laughs> into the street and get hit by a car. <laughs> oh. Wisely walking into the street and getting hit by a car. Because <laughs> it wanted out. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, foreshadowing. Coco stayed by her mother's side until the age of one when she required emergent medical care at the zoo's hospital due to a severe illness. There, under the care of Penny Patterson and Charles Pasternak. These are very good names. Yeah. For like... They sound like they work at Doctors in Marvel movies. Yeah. (laughs) Like, (laughs) for like, I don't know. What's a... Those are scientist names. Oh, one, Dr. Pa- Penny Patterson. Yeah. Doctor yeah. Doctor Scientist, which is her title. Penny super Patterson. Super Doctor Scientist. <laughs> you know that. Oh, I love that it. Superhero. <laughs> super Doctor Scientist. Yeah. <laughs> the world's scientistist man. <laughs> so while she was there. They decided to loan Coco to Patterson with the agreement that they would commit at least four years to researching her and taking care of her. Which is like okay. loaning a gorilla yeah. to someone. Loaning a very a weird behavior. Being. Yeah. <laughs> They're like, she's so smart. I have her on loan. <laughs> like, yeah. Like an at exhibit least, like... in a museum. <laughs> like, what the fuck is wrong with these people? Yeah. Just be like you're going to go live with Uncle Patty Patterson Uncle for Penny. a while. <laughs> Uncle Penny. You're gonna go live with Uncle Penny. <laughs> it just really bothers me because they, the entire time I was researching this, I'm like, they have it both ways, and they find no ethical issue with it. And it's just the yeah. fact that you're like, oh, she's basically like a small child. I have her on loan. But from we have Zoom. her on loan. Yeah. <laughs> We'll give her back after. Not like Penny adopted her for a while under under yeah. the agreement that she would do some research. Or like, fostered I, even? Fostered. Fostered. <laughs> On loan. Over time, uh, it was decided that Coco would remain under Patterson's care with support from the Gorilla Foundation, an organization Patterson established to further gorilla research and... Um, like bring about conservation initiatives. So like Okay. Dope. Yeah. We love that. I don't like when yeah. like people go down to the Fern Gully rainforest or whatever and bulldoze over all the gorilla eggs yeah. or, or whatever happens to them in the wild that we're saving them from. <laughs> so now we're gonna get into the parts where I need to make it very clear 
that Penny Patterson is a little bit of a exaggerator. She tends to have a little bit of a confirmation bias. Okay. So so not a good super doctor scientist. <laughs> um not not great. It, I guess it depends if like the kind of science you're into involves like the scientific method, then no. Um if the kind of science you're into is like more Astrology. like fictiony, <laughs> there might be a term that combines those two things. I've never read a book, so okay, I okay. know. But <laughs> she leans more that way. Sorry, if you were mm-hmm. going to write a movie about it, it would be a Disney movie. So Patterson reported that Coco's sign language usage, which she taught her, demonstrated her mastery of the language. Coco began her training at just one years old and developed a vocabulary of over a thousand signs, which she adeptly combined in complex ways. Okay. No, no. She did. However, despite it's like the one thing she's known for. And when I read some of this to you later, it sounds like a gorilla wrote it. Is it like, However, you, you know, there's like the, all the owners that are training their dogs how to speak. Using yes. With the, the little, little buttons. Button. Yeah. Yeah. Is it basically like that? Like if but you worse. make this shape with your hands, I'll give you food. So basically, yes. It's which like my yeah, cats okay. know how to do that. My cats <laughs> yeah. know like if I scream in your ear at four a.m., you give me food. <laughs> that's a lot of what it was. Uh, that's so disappointing. Despite her proficiency in signing and understanding, she was never instructed in how to write. Patterson says she observed several instances where Coco's use of signs indicated a higher level of cognitive ability than typically attributed to non-human primates. For instance, Coco displayed the ability to use displacement, communicating about objects not currently present, which is like, okay. sure. So she's got uh, ob- object, object, permanence. object permanence. Yeah. Yeah. At the age of 19, she successfully passed the mirror test of self-recognition, a feat that most other gorillas do not achieve. People say that elephants pass those all the time as well, and I'm like, I don't think they do. <laughs> I don't know what that really – like, I know what it means. I don't know what it entails, but, like, yeah. if an elephant's so smart – How do you know so that an smart, elephant recognizes itself? <laughs> Like, there's got to be a way that smarter people than us have figured it out. But, like, I would assume, like, if it had dysphoria or dysmorphia. It's like, ew, what's that? <laughs> and, well, you would, you would ask an elephant if it hates itself after putting Ooh. a mirror <laughs> in its enclosure. And if and it, it does. it would to the parts of itself that it hates. <laughs> which it never would have been able to see. Yeah. yeah. Per- okay. We just did it. We just solved science. <laughs> so it's bullying elephants and gorillas. Yes. I, I can figure out if uh, an animal um, recognizes itself in the mirror and or is trans. <laughs> so that's great. Well, only only if it's trans. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, I, I can't really I, tell. <laughs> well, every other elephant's fucking stupid as shit. <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely only the trans elephants that are smart. Mm. Additionally, Coco was reported to share personal memories and demonstrate meta language skills using language reflexively to discuss language itself. See, this is what I mean. The claims are like a little right. vague and and so impressive sounding. It's like, oh my god, yeah. discussing language itself. So, but like asking like... about grammar rules or. <laughs> So, <laughs> well, Coco would be like uh, one of the examples I saw of this of being like, "What's that called?" Okay, which so asking is discussing, what is for, yeah, like what what say? is that? Yeah, so, yeah, but like <laughs> the examples of it are always like Coco head uh, no, and she'd be like, "She's saying she doesn't know what that is. It's an apple, Coco apple." <laughs> it's like okay. Okay. So it is like the dogs. It is like the dogs yes. with the buttons. There's so much interpretation. But I think the dog impressive. with the button is less is less open yeah. to interpretation. Right, right, right. 
like <laughs> I think more liberties were taken with Coco than are being taken with these dogs mm -hmm. because nobody's fucking claiming these dogs are asking complex questions about language itself. <laughs> like, no. They're like, see, the dog's like, dad, don't cry. Give food instead. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and like that I believe it's like shut up food <laughs> I, yeah. I believe that from a dog but if the Sad, dog was like outside why does mummy cry at night <laughs> it's, like, <laughs> it's like why did we put a cry at night button on this thing <laughs> <laughs> additionally Coco was reported to share personal memories <laughs> Stop it. Sorry, they can't remember. Sorry. If I can't remember stuff, they can't remember I know. stuff. <laughs> like, not this 800 pound rat acting like she's better than me. <laughs> this fucking lizard. <laughs> this is a hairy fucking lizard. <laughs> this nasty fey ray grabbing piece of shit. Um, she was also observed and bad bitch alert. She was also observed lying <laughs> and <laughs> trying to <laughs> and being sarcastic to make people laugh. Okay, like, I love her. <laughs> uh, I believe like, it. Hey, I like, love her. Do, do, like, does Coco want a treat? It's like, does Coco want a treat? <laughs> <laughs> That's what you sound like. She's saying that's what you sound like. Did you sound like you stupid she, bitch? You. She goes. You. Like you sound like. <laughs> like so fucking funny, but like that's also her interpretation. Like yeah. that would be. It would be like Coco Sky, a coconut, and she'd be yeah. like, "You sassy girl." Because like, what the fuck is this bitch talking about? It, it is like, like is, has anybody had owners. enough of fucking Penny? <laughs> yes, it's pet owners who th who like read too much into their cat's expressions. The way I'm like, oh god, Holly's been such a bitch today. Like, no, she hasn't. She doesn't know how to be rude. Like, <laughs> no, she she's hasn't. Like, yes. You have. <laughs> <laughs> You're the bitch today. You're the bitch today. <laughs> that was me with Angus earlier, being like, um, he knows we're in a fight. <laughs> Like, yeah, why is he exactly rubbing that. his tail against me? <laughs> like, because he's a dumb no, animal. No, he doesn't. <laughs> no, he doesn't. <laughs> You're the one in a fight. You <laughs> alone. Like, I do believe, and I do believe animals, especially like domesticated animals, believe. Like I believe that they understand some words because obviously you you spend any time with yeah. like a dog for five minutes. A dog knows outside. A dog knows food. Like. Yeah. A dog knows dinner. Like yeah. our dogs, I mean, like when I was growing up, would know like when it was the holidays because they would know when we put up the Christmas tree, they get an extra treat. See, so, yeah, like, they're like not, that's. Yeah. <laughs> they're like, I believe oh, it's that food animals time. learn things for food motivated reasons. <laughs> yeah. And I think that's been very well established. <laughs> I don't think, I don't think Coco. Like hung out with some gay guy for a weekend, and then after it was like being like really sarcastic and judgy. <laughs> like, I love a, I love the idea of a gorilla reading somebody. <laughs> <laughs> like, bitch, don't you dare! <laughs> <laughs> like signing like Coco Open Library. <laughs> Imagine being a drag queen and getting read by a gorilla. <laughs> I would kill myself. <laughs> they should definitely. Okay, it would have been super <laughs> iconic if Coco had been one of the judges <laughs> on Drag Race. <laughs> that would have been funny. <laughs> Coco just like signs like a thumbs up or a thumbs down. Yeah. <laughs> So Patterson documented instances where Coco apparently invented new signs to convey her novel thoughts. For, for example, she described no. how Coco combined the signs for finger and bracelet to refer to a ring, creating the term finger bracelet. Finger bracelet. I like that. <laughs> I'm like, I don't know. She still sounds pretty stupid to me. 
I thought she could <laughs> ask what words were. No, she's like, oh, I think finger that's bracelet. So funny. Finger bracelet. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, and why do you think she was talking about a ring? That's the thing. Like, she would be like, Coco, <laughs> what do you want for breakfast today? And Coco would be like, finger bracelet. And she'd be like, oh, that's so smart. She means ring. <laughs> It's like okay, <laughs> which like listen, I love lies too, <laughs> but like you're supposed to be a fucking doctor fraud. scientist. <laughs> I love a lies. I love fraud. I love no gaslighting. <laughs> yeah, at that with great power. We've been doing this for <laughs> this podcast for a year. We all know. We know at this point. We know at this point that with great power comes no <laughs> responsibility. <laughs> In fact, less and less accountability. With great power comes no accountability. <laughs> Merch. <laughs> the bar just gets lower and lower. <laughs> Uncle Spider Man is spinning in his grave. <laughs> oh. Between 1972 and 77, Coco underwent several assessments of infant IQ, which included the Cattle Infant Intelligence Scale and Form B of the Peabody Picture Vocabulary Test. Her scar, just in case anybody wanted to take them themselves to see how they match up against Coco or a fucking oh baby. God. We should do that for Are you more. smarter than a baby? <laughs> I wanted to know my infant IQ. <laughs> <laughs> I actually <laughs> what's your IQ and you're like infant or regular <laughs> I'm gonna put my infant <laughs> IQ on my tinder profile her scores falling between 70 and 90 were comparable to those of a human infant however Penny Patterson advised against directly comparing Coco's IQ to that of a human infant. She highlighted that gorillas develop locomotor skills earlier than humans and many infant IQ tests heavily rely on motor responses. Furthermore, given the differing rates of maturation between gorillas and humans, driving meaningful comparisons based solely on chronological age to compute IQ scores poses challenges. I like how now she's like, well, that's not a great way to measure that. Yeah, let's inject a little nuance into this. Yeah. I'm like, yesterday, Coco said, bottle, plant. And I was like, oh, bush. <laughs> She's clearly <laughs> saying bush. It's a like, bottle no. plant. <laughs> a bottle plant, of course, of course. Obviously. Researchers from the Gorilla Foundation reported that in 1983, Coco expressed a desire for a cat for Christmas. Ronald Cohn, a biologist affiliated with the foundation, told the Los Angeles Times that when Coco was given a realistic stuffed animal as a substitute, she showed dissatisfaction by not engaging with it and continued to express sadness through signing. I would be so pissed if yeah. I asked for a cat for Christmas and they're like, and we think got a you're going to be really happy. And it's mm -hmm. like some ugly fucking beanie baby. Mm -hmm. Like... I hope you want. I hope you wanted your Christmas ruined, because I'm about to Grinch the fuck out of this place. <laughs> There's not going to be a piece of glass in this room left unbroken. Like <laughs> we're done. You've here. ever heard of a? You've ever heard of a fucking bull in a china shop? Where do you find out what a fucking gorilla does? <laughs> a, gor a gorilla to your Christmas tree. You know. You know what's a lot like China? A human skull in Coco's fist. <laughs> Just the rampage of her, like, bouncing around the lab, just, like, crunching people's skulls in. What an unhinged Coco way to cat. demand a kitten. <laughs> I mean, okay, when like, I was a this kid. This is why they gave I you asked, a stuffed toy, Coco. <laughs> you freak. When I was a kid, I asked for a computer, and they got me this thing that was, like, a children's toy that was, like, $70. And you put punch cards in, and it let you play games like Hangman really loudly with volume you couldn't turn <laughs> off. Um, and I was very upset, and I did not like it. But I did spend the entire eight-hour drive in a snowstorm to Quebec, which is something we did every Christmas, playing with it. As loudly. loudly as possible <laughs> with no breaks. And by the time we got there, they were like, you're right. 
we know you wanted a computer that you could use quietly alone in your room. <laughs> and I think you're going to get it. <laughs> and I did. That is such a smart way to use Spite. I bet you have a really high infant IQ. <laughs> um, Through the fucking roof. <laughs> At the Infant IQ Measurement Agency, they have a photo up of me behind the desk. Yes, it's because <laughs> I keep showing up and asking them to certify my forms and they won't. <laughs> So on her birthday in 1984, she got what she wanted, just like I did. And they gave her a kitten. Well, they gave her the opportunity to choose a kitten from a litter of abandoned kittens that were floating around the lab for some reason. Mm. Coco selected a gray male Manx and named him All Wall. (laughs) I forgot about All the name. Ball. All ball. They're like, she's so smart. <laughs> I'm like, That's... you couldn't. All ball? No. You couldn't have All been like his name was Sun? Name. <laughs> all ball like... is an amazing name. Because he's all Honestly... ball. Because he's all ball. He's just a, <laughs> Do you he's get a little it? ball. He's an all I'll... ball. I... He's all ball. <laughs> a hairy fucking bird can get it, but you can't get it, Caitlin. <laughs> His old ball. Get it? <laughs> Especially uh. when they curl up and go to sleep. <laughs> That's true. I think it's a great cat name. Okay, you know what? I um if I ever get another cat again when I get rid of Angus, um, I might name it all ball. I'm gonna name mine Pietka. After your other I'm gonna name episode. mine all ball. All ball in the <laughs> Like, now I'm just fighting. <laughs> Penny Patterson said that Coco cared for the kitten as if he were a baby gorilla. Researchers observed Coco attempting to nurse All Ball and displaying oh, no. gentle and affectionate behavior towards him. They believe that Coco's nurturing instincts towards the kitten, along with the skills she developed through playing with dolls, would aid her in learning how to care for offspring in the future. In December of that year, Allball managed to get out of Coco's enclosure and met his end in a car accident. Mm, baby. He was driving. He killed an entire family. <laughs> <laughs> He's trying to get out driving. of there. He's like, this, this fucking gorilla <laughs> drunk on gorilla to milk. nipple. <laughs> <laughs> oh woozy <laughs> like the little milk stash that kittens get <laughs> the little milk beard <laughs> a little like wiry hair sticking out of its mouth <laughs> like speeding down the road <laughs> struggling to get the keys into the door <laughs> <laughs> you can hear you can hear coco's lumbering behind him <laughs> come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, please 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 <laughs> This is so horrible. It's very Uh, sad. (laughs) I'm glad he escaped. (laughs) But yeah, he must have been running to like escape and immediately get killed. Yeah. (laughs) Patterson conveyed to Coco through sign language that All Ball had passed away. That seems a little mean. (laughs) She reported that Coco responded with signs indicating her understanding, such as bad, sad, bad, and... Frown, cry frown, sad trouble. Cry frown, sad trouble. Frown, cry frown, sad trouble. sounds like Scientology talk. I know. Okay. They're like, she was a wordsmith. (laughs) Frown, cry frown, sad trouble. I mean, compared compared to other gorillas, probably, we don't know. Uh, well, she yeah, might have been fucking but I'm like grading on a fucking curve here. <laughs> like, that's not impressive to me. I could say so many more words than that. <laughs> what if she was? What if she actually was like kind of a stupid gorilla? And like other gorillas, if you taught them how to sign, would be like talking to you in like complex. The other sentences. gorillas that knew how to sign were like this stupid bitch. <laughs> yeah. Or what if she was like like to the other gorillas? She's like, fucking Penny came in today. <laughs> and I <laughs> I was like, she was like, <laughs> she was like, I was actually telling her her bracelet was fucking ugly. Uh, and she was like, 
I don't know, acting like I made up some new word. Like I know what a ring is. Like I was like, your bracelet makes your wrist look like a fucking finger. <laughs> she went off and wrote that down. She's always writing <laughs> something down. Putting her name on everything but a marriage certificate, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I do love the idea of getting read by a gorilla now. <laughs> Literally so funny. Libraries open, Penny. Sit your ass down. <laughs> Patterson also claimed to have heard Coco produce sounds reminiscent of human weeping in the aftermath of the incident. I don't like the way she's like, she knows how to cry and I keep her in a cage. Yeah. Like she she weeps like a person. And I study and I her, her like an cage. animal. Yeah. Like, if everything she said about Coco was true, she is a fucking monster yeah. for, for everything she did with her. Every last thing. Like, <laughs> in 1985, Coco had the opportunity to select two new kittens from a litter. The feline companions she chose, whom she named Lips and Smokey, were also Manxes. I lips love is a lips weird name for a cat. Smokey, <laughs> Smokey Do they is, have a, lips? is an iconic cat name. Lips for a cat is weird. Do cats have lips? I guess. Not really. That's gross. I don't want to think about it anymore. I'm going to throw up. When her trainer inquired about the meaning behind the name, Coco reportedly responded with lips lipstick. So I guess Coco can't tell the difference between orange and red and... Or maybe yeah. Penny just always had this really ugly fucking orange lipstick. <laughs> and Coco was reading her Coco's for film. Like, she looks like your ugly lips. <laughs> I'm going to name this one Penny's Ugly Lips. <laughs> <laughs> Penny's always walking in the room with like a, a fine dusty. layer of Cheeto dust. Over her <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to name this one Die Alone after my best friend Penny. <laughs> For her birthday in July 2015, Coco was given another litter of kittens to choose from. Oh my god. She selected two and named them Miss Black and Miss Gray. <laughs> <laughs> Those are good names for cats. I know. Penny Patterson's published research on Coco has faced some criticism from various quarters within the scientific community. Mm -hmm. Since Patterson's initial publications in 1978, several critical assessments of her reports on signing behavior in great apes have emerged. Some argue that video evidence suggests Coco was simply prompted by her trainer's unconscious cues to display specific signs, a phenomenon known as the clever Hans effect, which I think most people have heard of. Right. It's a little counting horse or a, house, a horse mm -hmm. who could do math, but the horse, I think, was tapping his hoof and the trainer was like standing in the audience, like either like, like doing something with his hands or his feet to show the whole like the, the horse number. how many times yeah. to mimic yeah mm -hmm. ape researchers who previously questioned patterson's interpretations of coco signing and her claims of grammatical competency advocating for advocated for more rigorous testing so one of the other things um that's like actually kind of fucking offensive um about this little gorilla well at least the claims around her sign language is not like that they said she spoke american sign language but there's a completely different grammar to it and mm -hmm. the way coco spoke american sign language it wasn't in that it was never like following any rules of any grammar our grammar english grammar american sign language grammar like it just it was just random words and that led to a little bit more confusion and stigma around right. ASL. And it wasn't like the broken speech of like a toddler learning it. It was, yeah. it was random. Yeah, exactly. Because like even so broken like, speech follows some grammatical rules. Because like exactly. uh, you pick human them up. toddlers are very clever. Yeah, you pick them up. Yeah. So there – and like I Googled it, I saw a few examples, but like a few people being like, there's one end of the spectrum where it's really impressive that a gorilla can learn sign language. And then there's the other end where it's like a gorilla could learn sign language. 
Like a literal fucking monkey can do it. Critics have pointed out the disparity between the frequent appearances of Coco's exploits in the popular press and the fewer and fewer scientific publications containing substantial data coming out of the Gorilla Research Institute. So more talk shows, more celebrity meet and greets, more documentaries and fucking PBS Mm -hmm. specials or whatever, but less and less research coming from the research institute. She became not like a gorilla that they were researching and taking care of, but like it was like a child celebrity. Like (laughs) with like parents who were like pushing her to do things that she shouldn't Mm -hmm. be doing because gorillas do not need to go on talk shows. They don't need to make public appearances. They're fucking gorillas. (laughs) Like Some researchers argue that Coco may not have comprehended the meaning behind her signs and merely learned to complete them in exchange for rewards, indicating her actions were the result of operant conditioning. Concerns have also been raised about the interpretation of Coco's signing, as it was often left to the handler, usually Little Miss Penny, potentially leading to improbable interpretations. But Patterson defended her research, asserting that blind and double-blind experiments were conducted to evaluate the gorilla's comprehension and that they could sign spontaneously to each other and strangers without prompting. She claimed that gorillas signed meaningfully most of the time. Ugh. So she's like, they sign to each other sometimes. Like Michael, her gorilla best friend and her. Did like, anybody else would, ever see that? <laughs> like, did I they? I think people saw them signing random things at each other because that's what they did. Like, because Coco knows if you do that, sign for food, you get food. So when they're like talking to each other, like, do you want to get some food? Or like looking at each other, like, food? They'll do the sign. Right. It's habit. Okay. It's muscle memory, right? Mm-hmm. Like, but they weren't like sitting around being like, "Hey, what are you up to?" Nothing. What are you up to? It's like, oh, I'm just gonna go get a real. I was just, I saw this really gorge finger bracelet earlier today. Like, <laughs> as Coco approached the end of her life in the 2010s, anthropologist and primatologist. Barbara J. King questioned the ethical implications of Patterson's caretaking decisions and criticized the foundation for excessively anthropomorphizing Coco. This was my, I'm on her side. I'm a Barbara J. King stan. We're, we're on Barbara's team. Yeah. We're team Barb. Oh, oh my God, that's the thing already. We're Barb's. Oh, wait. <laughs> no, we are not barbs. <laughs> no, we are not barbs. We're very specifically not barbs. Yeah, she was like one of the first people who was like, so say everything you're saying is true. I hope you like fucking prison food. <laughs> <laughs> Linguist Sherman Wilcox, specializing in sign languages, expressed concerns about the foundation's use of edited clips of Coco signing deeming it deceptive and disrespectful to American Sign Language. He feared it would reinforce the misconception that ASL lacks syntax. Following Coco's passing, linguist Jeffrey K. Pullum wrote for the Chronicle, asserting that Coco had limited language ability, primarily producing signs randomly to obtain food from her trainer, and highlighted Hmm. the lack of falsifiability in Patterson's conclusions. I'm going to give you an example. The perfect example. Handler. Coco, do you like to talk to people? Coco, fine nipple. Handler. Nipple rhymes with people, okay? She doesn't sign people per se, so she may be trying to do a sounds like. But she indicated it was fine, so she likes people. I understand that she, like, can... Un- understand like at least this person is claiming that she can understand words but like to understand rhymes i know that they sound yeah. the same but to understand what a rhyme is is like a completely yeah. different level of yeah because like again bringing it back to like my dogs if i said something to my dog like if i said 
mood instead of food, they would just yes. think I said food. Yeah, they wouldn't be like, sounds like, and they would like, it's not even just that. She is remembering that they rhyme. Yeah, that they rhyme. And instead of pointing to a person or something, decides the yeah. best way to convey that is to say nipple. And not even or instead of just saying yes. yes. Yeah. <laughs> like, yes. It's so Which you would think like, would be the easiest. Yeah. <laughs> like <laughs> the Fine easiest nipple. answer to a yes no question. We're gonna talk about the nipple thing later because she was a menace. She, <laughs> she could she not be a... left alone with a primate. <laughs> oh no. I'm gonna tell you right though. Any mammal really. There is lawsuits. I do remember he was like trying to touch uh, she was trying to touch Robin Williams' nipples too, right? Oh yeah. She's she got all <laughs> the nipple there. fiend. To all oh everybody. First day on the job too. We're, no, there's all. I got a whole nipple section in here that we're gonna get oh, to. Oh no, not the nipple section. <laughs> Former employees of the Gorilla Foundation voiced criticisms of the methods employed in caring for Coco and her male companion Ndume. In 2012, approximately nine staff members, including caregivers and researchers, resigned out of a group of twelve. And some submitted a letter to the board outlining their concerns. Former caregiver John Safkow mentioned that all board members, except for Betty White, left <laughs> following the walkout. An anonymous source identified as Sarah disclosed to Slate that Coco's diet consisted of an excessive amount of processed meat and candy, with Coco receiving a traditional Thanksgiving dinner annually. <laughs> That's hilarious. You can't give a gorilla a Thanksgiving dinner. They're supposed to be eating like plants. Yeah. <laughs> like, I love that like, they're like full gravy. She like, is just a pet at this point. Because yeah. you're feeding her people food. Like, I'm sorry, why is the Gorilla Research Center having an annual Thanksgiving dinner for a gorilla? It's so bonkers. While the official diet provided to Coco appeared suitable. Patterson would allegedly visit and feed her chocolates and meats, according to the source. Just walking in with a bag full of like chocolate <laughs> chips and chocolate various and, awful and turkey. <laughs> Fuck off. Coco's weight, reported at 270 pounds, exceeded the typical range for a female gorilla in the wild, which is 150 to 200. Multiple former employees corroborated claims that both Coco and Ndume were administered massive quantities of supplements based on a naturopath's recommendation. No. This is what I'm saying. She was, her science was so pseudo. Oh my like, God. Stay away from her. <laughs> Get, Get a, a job. job. <laughs> like, fuck. <laughs> Safkow recalled the number to be between 70 to 100 pills per day. <gasps> While Sarah that mentioned. Poor gorilla. And the way they got her to fucking eat it was putting it in inappropriate foods like smoked turkey, pea soup, non alcoholic beer, and candy. Come on. <laughs> like Coco kicking back with like a fresh 0% brewski while eating like a handful of cold and broom. <laughs> and cold cuts. <laughs> oh, God. Like smoking a cigar. <laughs> like, it's so fucking Nasty. ridiculous. Penny, I don't know what the Hague is, but I think they need to be told about Penny Patterson. <laughs> Little Penny Patterson. <laughs> the Gorilla Foundation acknowledged that Coco consumed between 5 to 15 types of nutritional supplements and admitted to using homeopathic remedies. No. Fucking sugar water. Or sugar pills. Random drops she of water. And the didn't memory need any of more medicine. sugar. <laughs> no, and she didn't need any more pills like, <laughs> jesus fucking christ she didn't need any fucking part given, of the compound word sugar pill given this fucking gorilla diabetes <laughs> like what the fuck 
Patty. <laughs> Leave her alone. <laughs> I got a job. <laughs> oh. Several former caregivers at the Gorilla Foundation all expressed concerns regarding the neglect of Coco's companion in Dume. A group of ex-employees reached out to a blogger specializing in the ape caregiver community, it's very niche, who subsequently contacted the USDA Animal and Plant Health Inspection Service to investigate the allegations. Following the inquiry, they reported instances of neglect concerning Ndume, such as the failure to conduct tuberculosis testing for 20 years, despite the recommended annual testing for gorillas. How are you a research institute when you don't no. research? You don't even institute. Also, I'm sorry. This gorilla is on loan. Like, you really need to take care of her. <laughs> because she's not even like, yours. <laughs> she's leased. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Imagine somebody's the like, I'm going to loan you my gorilla. gorilla. <laughs> Imagine somebody's like, I'm going to loan you my gorilla. And you treat your gorilla like this. You treat their yeah. gorilla like this. And then you try to yeah, give it back. Yeah, it's yours. <sighs> Okay, we're entering the nipple zone. <laughs> I don't I don't like the nipple zone. I don't want to be here. Well, we're here. Coco was reported to have displayed a fixation on both male and female nipples, with multiple individuals stating that Coco requested to see their nipples. In 2005, three female staff members at the Gorilla Foundation filed lawsuits against the organization, alleging that they were coerced into revealing their nipples to Coco by Penny Patterson. That's so weird. <laughs> Penny. That's so weird. Penny. Penny you Penny, can't do Penny, that. Penny, 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 That's girl. sexual harassment. That's a lot. Mm. Imagine being sexually harassed by a gorilla. That's worse than being read by a gorilla. Oh, 100%. She probably did both. <laughs> She's like, those are some <laughs> ugly nipples. <laughs> Show me your nipples. Ugh. Ew. Nipple too big, areola too small. <laughs> what are those fucking Lego She's, pieces you got on your chest? What does she mean when she says ugly umbrella? It's like, it sounds like areola. <laughs> <laughs> the lawsuits claim that in response to signing from Coco, Patterson pressured staff members to expose themselves to the gorilla. On one occasion, Patterson reportedly said, oh, yes, Coco, Nancy has nipples. Nancy can show you her nipples. Another instance involved Patterson telling a new employee that Coco wanted to see her nipples, pressuring her to comply and stating that everyone does it for her around here. When the woman reluctantly exposed herself to Coco... Patterson complimented her appearance. The lawsuits were ultimately settled out of court. Penny Patterson is a fucking menace. Yeah, Penny Patterson is. Is she Penny dead Patterson? Too? I hope so. I don't know. <sighs> I didn't check, but I, I will now. So. This is her episode too. Shout out to you, yeah, Penny Patterson. This is your fucking episode, Penny. <laughs> Not Penny Patterson, this is your tape. <laughs> oh my god. 13 Not reasons why, but it's Coco. <laughs> She's alive. Can't wait till she dies. When she dies, we'll re-release this episode. <laughs> yes. It's like a little bonus. <laughs> Gorilla expert Kristen Lucas remarked that other gorillas are not known to exhibit a similar fixation on nipples. A former caregiver alleged that Patterson would interpret the sign for nipple as a sound alike for people, but only when significant donors were present. So around everyone else, she'd be like, she means nipple. nipple. Get them out. Those are nice. It's fucking nasty. And then, and then when around donors, donors are around, she'd be she's like, like, nipple means people. She's such yeah. a clever little rhymester. She isn't talking about your boobs. Yeah, that actually means donate. <laughs> that actually means donate. What, what are you saying, Coco? Donate at patreon.com slash respect the dead. Nipple. Nipple means means patron. Because they sound the same. Respect the dead. Yeah, because yeah. they sound the same. Yeah. <laughs> 
-hmm. (laughs) After concluding her research with Patterson, Coco moved to a reserve in Woodside, California. It was there where she lived with another gorilla named Michael, who passed away in 2000. Michael is her best friend who died. And then she didn't apparently smile or laugh for months. I saw it four to six, four or six in different places. And this wasn't Penny saying this. So I don't know if it was true because I might believe someone else. But then I'm also like, do they smile and laugh? I don't know. (laughs) Because I think, again, that's anthropomorphizing them. Yeah. Like, but... She did seem like she was having fun with Robin Williams. I will say that. She did. She that seemed in like very good spirits. Yeah. She didn't make a sound, but she went like. Because <laughs> she just got a hold of his joyful. wallet. <laughs> yeah, she's like, <laughs> fuck you. Coco passed away in her sleep on June 19th, 2018 at the Gorilla Foundation's Preserve in Woodside, California, at the age of 46. The Gorilla Foundation released a statement acknowledging the profound impact of her life and contributions to understanding gorilla's emotional capacity and cognitive abilities. Despite her advanced age, her death came unexpectedly to the staff. In 2022, a video went viral on social media. It was said that it was a video showing Coco delivering her last words to humanity. I am gorilla, the subtitles read. I am flowers, animals, I am nature. Man Coco love, earth Coco love, but man stupid, stupid. Coco sorry, Coco cry. Time hurry, fix earth, help earth, hurry, protect earth. Nature see you. Thank you. I wish, I wish she (laughs) she did that beautiful final speech. Uh, Yeah, it was just like, I wish that wasn't totally made up. (laughs) It was completely edited together for a bunch of different clips. Like, it's like her final speech to humanity. It's like, "Mm, no. And also, there's evidence that people, like, reinterpreted what she was saying to mean something else specifically for this, obviously. Jody Cripps, an assistant professor of American Sign Language at Clemson University, said he could not fully understand Coco's signing abilities and said the video does not provide evidence that Coco left a grave message to humans about Earth. Also, the video had been put together in 2015. But that's the thing about Coco the gorilla. Nobody actually seems to care if any of it is true. Because the truth is, we just want to believe. Yeah. And because it's it's beautiful if it's true. Yeah. And I think probably more people would be convinced to give a fuck about climate change if a fucking gorilla, a hairy little rat, told them that mm-hmm. they should more than seeing people more than die all the from super doctor disasters. scientists. <laughs> yeah. All millions of super doctor scientists around the globe have told us this is going to happen, but more people would probably see a gorilla and be like, I trust that bitch. She doesn't have any ulterior yeah. motives. How could she? She's fucking dead. She's a gorilla. She's a <laughs> dead gorilla. Motherfucker's a dead gorilla. Why would she lie? <laughs> uh, anyways, thank you for coming to our little our little zoo more cemetery zoo thank you thank this, you for this is our second animal in the pet cemetery oh the pet cemetery okay Z- pet cemetery is so much better than zoo morgue <laughs> <Zoo morgue? laughs> that's a real sicko phrase actually um yeah uh another addition to the pet cemetery which i think all of them are it. mine Yes. I got a couple couple cats. Vegan. <laughs> now a gorilla. So thanks for coming. I'm Kaylin Conrad. You can find me on everything as Kaylin Conrad. I'm Hoots. You can find me on Twitter at Punished Hoots. And you can find me on YouTube at Hoots YouTube. 
And we have a Patreon where you can hang out with us after the shows. Every Thursday, we have a little wind down for every single episode that we record. And if you want to suggest someone, there are certain tiers that you can join. Read the description and you can join the suggestion. You can join that tier and give us a little name for the suggestion cemetery. And there's probably other benefits that I don't remember. We'll say them in the morgue. Okay. If you want to find out, you have to join the Patreon. Yeah, you have to pay. <laughs> okay, bye.